thank the honourable member. The question is that the motion be agreed to, and I call the honourable member for Goldstein. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. And I uh, want to start by following on from the previous speaker, who made reference to the fact that uh, we should look for real solutions in this important issue around how we protect Victorians and their safety. And of course, one of the best ways to make sure that you can deal with a problem is actually to identify the problem itself. And that is the spirit and the intent of this motion. Deputy Speaker, there are so many people in my electorate who now, for the first time really in their adult life and living in a safe community, are concerned about their safety and security. That is not in dispute. You go and talk to many residents. It was one of the highest uh, polling issues in uh, a recent community survey that I did of the Goldstein electorate, in addition to matters like the national economy and making sure people have jobs and opportunity, was that they could be safe in their homes, that they could be safe on their streets, that they weren't at risk of carjacking. And if you had ever asked people in the wonderful electorate of Goldstein whether they ever thought that was going to be a risk to their life, the idea of carjacking, it would have been an absurdity. But they don't feel that way today. Why? Because they have a lived experience of somebody they know, either directly or indirectly through their community, of the serious consequences uh, that have occurred. And it's about time people in this parliament on both sides, and I always welcome the opportunity from the opposition, to do something simple, which is to stand up and call out this behaviour rather than simply in seeking to involve themselves in political buck passing uh, on this issue. Because the very obligation of every government surely must be, particularly the state government responsible for corrections of police and emergency services, is to protect citizens from undue harm. The crime wave that has swept across the great state of Victoria does cause genuine angst and fear. It's challenging to confront the idea that our communities are no longer safe and as harmonious as we would like them to be. But the reality is this comes up from my constituents all the time. And perhaps unlike some other members, we're listening, we're mindful, we're conscious of the human impact that occurs. And the Crime Statistics Agency has reported the assaults have spiked 12 per cent, robberies have increased by 24 per cent, thefts are up 16 per cent, overall crime is up 10.2 per cent. It's been particularly high increases in the city of Glen Ira, which fits within uh, the, the wonderful electorate of Goldstein, as well as the city of Bayside. Daniel Andrews tragically has abandoned community safety and presided over a failing justice system at the same time these events have happened. You can't get past that. I know shouting and yelling from the opposition or having some sort of strong statement about what the Bailey government did in the past might sort of help them heal over their pain, but that's what actually is happening because we know sentencing has been weakened. That's basically been now acknowledged by the state government. The bail laws have been watered down and that has now been basically acknowledged by the state government. And we have seen fundamental re relocation of police resources not to protect the community. The Premier promised to tackle the issue of violent youth gangs who have uh, consistently terrorised Victorians, but hasn't made the progress that I think even he wanted to seek or achieve. And the reality is there is no stopping of the aggravated burglaries, car thefts, home invasions, assaults and on-street carjackings. There was a horrific example just outside of my electorate recently, Deputy Chair, where a young man who was on the phone, on the phone to his husband uh, was uh, in his car and in the midst of that phone call, he actually got carjacked in the middle of the day in a shopping centre. Now, if that can happen to somebody in the age bracket of, in the early 20s, then imagine how vulnerable so many people feel if they're in their 60s, their 70s, their 80s. They just want to go out there, they just want to go and do a bit of shopping, they want to get on their life peacefully and normally with respect for other people. And what they're experiencing is carjacking. We had another one in Brighton where a woman was robbed and assaulted before her car was ultimately stolen. And the reality is the tragic loss of Talia Haken in Burke Street, the Burke Street carnage earlier this year, is still very raw in my community because Talia was only 10 years old. And we, have, we continue to stand with the Haken family and give our heartfelt best wishes to, uh, to the family and the mother and sister Maggie. Victorians have had enough. 
Federally, we of course are listening and acting, and that's why programs like the $50 million Community Sa Safer Communities Program provides funding to implement solutions, including greater CCTV, as well as 116 million national anti-gang squad. But there's only so much that we can do from Canberra. It takes a state government from Spring Street to act. I thank the